Morning all. I thought I'd go over my first game in the Barnet Congress over the weekend just gone. So I was black against R. Cohen, it's about 160 ECF. Um, he's been steadily improving over the last few years. Um, I played d6 as a kind of surprise move. So knight f3 now played actually c6. So one of my ideas is actually to try and transpose this into a French defence. If I can play later bishop g4 and, and maybe bishop takes f3, just get rid of this, this bishop then play e6 and d5 so I'll have a French defence without the bad bishop but we say it's the bad bishop but actually you know sometimes it is useful for solidifying e6 um, you know and it when it comes out it's it's kind of dangerous um, so anyway he played actually c3 and I was a bit put off by this plan a little bit already by this um, maybe he's going to do the dreaded triangle formation against me if he plays e3 but um, I play knight f6 and now he plays bishop g5 and I do decide to go for the bishop even though you know if white gets usually double pawns by taking like this you know white gets some um, h file pressure nevertheless um, I wanted to chase that bishop uh, and it did in fact go to go there to g3 so I played knight h5 and Maybe uh, Ribka was indicating bishop f5, that would keep a hold of white playing e4, which may have been quite useful. It's more potentially aggressive than, than the pawn on e3. Uh, but I played knight h5 and he played e4. And I don't immediately take this bishop on g3. I, I keep the tension now. I play bishop g7. I can afford to do that because if knight g5, I can, I can take with um, the pawn. So my knight's protected still. So there's no immediate danger with this knight on h5 on the rim. Uh, he plays bishop d3. And there's signs that, you know, as usual, the light squares are going to be uh, weakened, if, especially if I play knight g3. He'll have a hold more on h5 as a square. Um, but actually something interesting turn, turned up. Um, I thought I was the one with an emphasis on, on controversial... Uh, play but um, as we see now after knight takes g3 he breaks a sort of rule about capturing to the center capturing pawns towards the center I don't know if Tarish was was the person that created such rule like knights before bishops or capturing towards the center but it's um it, it is kind of a logical positional rule in general that um, you capture pawns towards the center um, because um, e even in this case with, with with the king castles you know well, first of all, may, maybe there's scope later for playing f4, but he, he was thinking that would weaken his position too much. But, um, I mean, also, maybe you know, the king can go to h2 and the rook to h1 and king g1, you know, to try and um, put pressure on h6 later rather cheekily. But uh, the way he played it um, was actually f g3. And... You know, there's some problems with this, notably the e3 square, which comes in very handy later. But also, when you capture towards the centre, the end games, if you've got more centre pawns, you know, usually it's they're, they're, they're easier to sort of um, get an advantage in the end game, to start dragging centre pawns down. So, um, but I've used this pawn structure recently against an IM, and I, I, I came out with a draw against Gullickson at the London Classic. So... I, I was wondering, you know, is it, is it going to be a bit like that? There's going to be dynamic play on the F-file uh, as compensation for capturing um, away from the center. Anyway, I play uh, C5, and he plays bishop C4, so we start to see hints of F7 being a bit vulnerable. And I cautiously just uh, castle here, um, protecting F7, of course. But uh, queen D3... And potentially the queen's going to line up with the bishop if the bishop reroutes. Uh, so that's a use for the d3. Um, also the knight can now, I suppose, go to d2 and he can perhaps double his rooks on the f-file. So white has no problem piece here. That's that's a good thing. You know, the, the team's working together for the white pieces at the moment. I play e6 to try and blunt that bishop. Um... I was thinking that if he plays d5, maybe I, I do just take and allow him a, a nice bishop there, because I'll have the e5 square. So he didn't play d5, and he didn't really consider it that much 
in, in the post-mortem he didn't really indicate that, but uh, knight bd2 was played. So queen e7, I just really want to get my bits uh, developed, so to have my rooks connected, perhaps the bishop on b7, and be able to defend d6 if necessary, um, which is potentially vulnerable. So rook a e1, so I now, with the idea of developing the bishop and gaining a bit of space on the queen side, I simply play a6. He plays bishop b3, so that's a dangerous um, uh, battery of bishop and queen against my light squares begins. But um, I have time to, to evict the queen from d3 now, after b5. He didn't play c4, maybe I'll just take and then knight e5. Uh, this would give me uh, the e5 square or the c5 square, and this would be very comfortable, I think. Um, so white doesn't you know, want to give up these squares in a hurry. So he wants to keep that pawn triangle. It's very solid, this pawn triangle. So um, he plays bishop c2 and allows c4. c4 is a little bit controversial because I'm releasing some of the the tension. Uh, so I, I, I get rid of my option for cd <clears throat> to undermine white center. So d4 is quite strong now. He moves his queen and I play bishop b7. And as well as d4 being strong, he, he kind of creates a more aggressive pawn chain now with e5 and you know maybe I wasn't quite awake it was it was three games that day on the Saturday and um, I think that the most uh, accurate continuation here is is to play d takes e5 at the time I thought it was a bit scary because of knight e4 to f6 but apparently I think black might be okay with a bit of analysis I did uh, with, with uh, Ribka D takes e, e5, and that's important because um, it, it means if if there's continual pressure on e5, then for example this knight can't leisurely reroute as it did in the game, uh, as we'll see with this advanced pawn chain, because f6 is vulnerable and the light squares are vulnerable. So my king side is a bit shaky here if there's an advanced pawn on e5. Uh, so this is why I wouldn't recommend this move um, if anyone. Uh, to play play this type of move in a hurry. What I played next was actually just d5. So it was well intentioned to try and stop white using the e4 square. However, I've just given white now a complete free hand on the king side because I can't you know do cds now because I've done c4, and I can't keep pressure on e5 because I've done done d5. So all the pressure has been released. White's got a free hand, and he uses this quite well now with the move h3, uh, because this means knight h2 to g4 is a nice leisurely maneuver, constructively uh, doing something, targeting um, you know h6 and f6. So I start to uh, be a bit panicky here, and I try and stop this uh, knight g4, or at least try and liberate my position a bit. Uh, so what I do is actually rook a e8 with the idea of playing for f5, even though I'm going to end up with a backward pawn on the unpassant capture, this backward pawn. And recently I lost a horrible game to my iPhone, this glaring on my iPhone, where I was in a French defense structure and, and the computer massacred me on the king side, using the combination of weaknesses on the king side and this backward pawn. Uh, funny enough, in the game, you know, I was a bit worried about my king safety, and we reach a critical moment now where I do get this backward pawn and after rook after sorry after knight g4 he's forcing me to play rook takes f1 virtually so and here is the moment of liberation where is also a moment of great weakness for me when I played e5 he misses a winning shot which I didn't see at the time, which is basically knight takes h6, and I don't think we'd even mention it in um, post-mortem either of us, but uh, queen takes queen h5, and this is rather embarrassing. The queen can't go to g7 because of queen takes e8, and if bishop g7, then there's queen h7 mate. If king uh, g7, then there's queen g6, so really um, I'd be falling apart. I think here. Um, it doesn't look too good. In fact, um, something like e4, maybe, uh, 
yeah, just just uh, Queen Queen H6. It's it's not it's not great, but um, he let me off the hook here and actually exchanged off this knight, which had just rerouted to G4 by playing Knight takes E5, and all of a sudden my position is coming more to life. Especially this Bishop is potentially now liberatable with D4 later. So I played Knight takes Queen takes, and he plays Queen H5. My first priority is to avoid getting mated though, like with queen g6 and stuff, and also queen takes rook if I ever move my queen off here. So um, I play rook f8 to try and exchange off the attacking rook here. And here are things turn very tactical, so after knight f3 I, I get that opportunity to use that e3 square finally. When I'd mentioned earlier, you know, fg weakens e3. And now I liberate this bishop. I, I use this uh, nice pin I have on the f-file. 